Hello everyone, this is Damon with the Easy Green Screen and in this tutorial I'm going to be discussing doing a green screen extraction with a green jersey. There are several methods for doing that. I discuss each of those methods in a different video with the same image so please be sure to watch those other videos as well. And the method in this video is going to be discussing using the automatic foreground recovery slider in Easy Green Screen and we're going to do that in dual mask. And I do it in dual mask, not to try to save hair, but to try to protect the hair from the adjustments we're going to make because they can make a pretty hard edge. And so to start, if I think that the foreground recovery is going to be the method I want to use, I'll first, first sample the um, color of the jersey or whatever else it is I'm trying to save just to see what the color is. And we see that the hue is 118, saturation of 34, and a brightness of 41. So if you don't know this hue scale, 120 is pure green. And so this jersey is pretty close to a true green color. If we sample the background, we see that we got a hue of 136. So the jersey is actually closer to a true green than the green screen itself is. However, the green screen is brighter. We see the brightness is 63. I think we were a little over 40. I don't remember the exact number, but we were 40 something on the, the jersey. So the green screen is a little bit brighter and saturation of 74. So what Easy Green Screen does is it's going to typically key off of the brightest green area in your image. And in that case, it would be the green screen, but it's also it's going to remove this jersey and whether it's recoverable with that foreground recovery slider depends on the color of the material or whatever it is you're trying to recover. Um, general rule is if it's a very dark green the foreground recovery slider works well or if the hue shifts far enough away from 120 which in this case it did not it was pretty close or a combination of those. So I'm just going to demonstrate, and, and first we're going to lasso the hair, so we're going to do this dual mask as I mentioned. Again, the reason for doing this in dual mask is not to try to recover any hair, because for this image we don't really have any flyaway hair strands that we're trying to recover, but it's going to let the hair retain that soft edge, because those adjustments we make, as I mentioned, are going to make a hard edge everywhere else in the image. And that'll make more sense when we get into it here. So you first notice that, yeah, the jersey is extracted. In the last video, we did this keep or remove areas. We're not going to do that in this method. I'm going to go into the key mask settings. And by default in dual mask, you're set to contract the mask by one pixel and recover foreground by 35 pixels. And I'm going to discuss both of these. And these are both off and default by single mask because you don't really want to use these adjustments too much in the hair area. But when you're in dual mask, these apply to everywhere outside of the hair area. So that area we lassoed will maintain the soft edge and everything outside that area will get these adjustments. So I'm going to turn the contract mask off and the foreground recovery up to 100. You see when I do that, the jersey is almost completely restored, um, except for a few small pieces, and I'll show the mask here. There's a few small, slightly transparent pieces. And also, the area that we had dark screen where it wasn't getting much light, that was now recovered with this foreground recovery. So it's not perfect. If you've got a dark jersey and a dark area on your screen that's a similar color, those are going to recover together. So the better your screen is lit more evenly, um, the less post work you'll have to do if you use this foreground recovery slider. And if that jersey was a darker green or if it was further away from 120 on the hue, we would not even have these little small holes here. But um, it actually did a little bit better job than I was expecting it to do based on the color. So we'll just go back to the main menu here. Let's view this. Let's view this against white because I think it'll be easier to see the edges that we're dealing with. 
Okay, so I'm going to discuss this contract mask, and I like to use this whenever I use the foreground recovery, and I'll show you why here. I'm going to um, zoom in. And you see we've got this dark halo on the edge of the arm, and we'll have that throughout the entire image as well, except for in the hair. The hair will not have that because these don't get applied to the hair region. So I'm going to, going to turn that foreground recovery off, and you can see the edge looks pretty clean with that off. Um, but what happens is when you turn that all the way up, it's having to try to recover this dark green, and in turn, it recovers a little bit on the edge, that dark halo you see. And so the best way to remove that is this con contract mask. And I usually use either one or two pixels. And in this case, we can probably get away with one pixel. But if I look at the pants here, I might want to use two pixels with that. So let's go two pixels on that. That actually looks pretty good. In this other area here, I'm going to do that in Photoshop manually. I know in the last video we did that in Easy Green Screen, but just to show you different methods, I'm going to show you in Photoshop how to do that. And so the higher you make this foreground recovery, I'm going to zoom back up to the arm here, or pan to the arm. Um, I like to look at this against the skin and, and make sure we have a nice edge on um, the, both the skin areas and the clothing, but I really always like to look at the skin first. So the more you use this, the harder that edge becomes. So the, what we can do is turn this uh, mask feathering up. You can go as high as two pixels and you can see that really blurs the edge. I usually just go from a half a pixel to one pixel, anywhere in there. I'll just leave it at half a pixel. I think on a print that would look just fine. And so that feathers the mask. Um, and even though we contracted and we made those little holes, we can see in the mask we made these little holes. I'm going to show you in Photoshop. It's pretty easy to touch those up. Um, so we'll just go back to our main menu. Let's fit this on the screen and just give it one final look over. And so with this method, that's all I'll do in Easy Green Screen. I'll just apply this here. Actually, we'll go back to transparency and then I'll apply this. So now what I do in Photoshop is I touch these areas up. Now, I'll just point out here, I'm going to hide these two layers. These are your spill correction layers. And then I'm going to disable this mask. And you can see we've got our original image back. So those pixels were not actually erased. And they're pretty easy to touch up. I'm just going to re-enable, re-enable this mask. I'll turn our Spill Correction back on. And if you Alt on Windows or Option on Mac and then click, you can go into the mask and you can actually touch the mask up. Now there's two tools I'm going to use to touch this up and the most obvious is of course your paintbrush tool. And make sure if you do this you've got hardness of 100, that way if you're getting close to the edge it doesn't bleed over into the background. Now this is the most obvious tool, but at the same time, it's really hard to paint close to the edge. So what I do is just come in here, and anything that I don't have to be too precise with, I'll just come in here. And what you can do as well, is you can view the image, and then um, if you click on the mask, if it's highlighted, you'll be painting in the mask while you're viewing your image. So I did that because in this area I wasn't quite sure what was foreground and what was background, but now I can see those areas that I want to recover and just click on those areas. And you can see we are recovering those areas right back into the mask. So now what I do is it's really tedious to paint close to the edge, and in most cases this works. We'll go back into the mask. I'm going to grab the dodge tool. I'm going to dodge the, dodge the highlights and I'll leave the exposure at 50%. And 
And this works unless you have areas that are pure black, but if you have any kind of opacity at all, I'll just demonstrate, I'm brushing right over with that dodge tool. And you can let go of the mouse, then re-click it to start over and, and instead of just brushing back and forth, when you let go of the mouse and re-click it and brush again, it's stronger on the first pass, so you can really um, quickly go over this. And you notice that my mouse is going over the edge because this dodge tool is set to highlights and it's only targeting the bright areas of the mask. So if you go over into this, the black areas, it's not going to have any effect on those areas. And the exposure, that's the strength or the, um, I guess, the threshold values of what it considers to be a highlight. And so this is pretty quick. And if you have any areas that don't want to react, you can always come in and grab your brush tool and just um, click those areas. And again, if you don't know what's foreground and what's background for sure, go back into your main view and then click your mask without clicking Alt. And then if you see that that's targeted, you can go in and recover those areas while you're looking at the main image. Now, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to go any further on that. I'll just leave it at that. Now, the spill correction. You see that with this spill correction layer off, we've got the original color of the jersey, but Easy Green Screen thought that, that was green spill, so it shifted the color. And you remember in the last video, we fixed that in Easy Green Screen. You can just as easily fix that in Photoshop after you extract. So to explain what this does is it blends a color map into the image using color blend mode. And then where it blends is determined by this um, mask here. So if you alt and click and go on the mask, you can see where the spill correction is being applied. So anything that's pure white gets 100% spill correction. And anything that's a grayscale gets partial spill correction. So what I'm going to do is just set the paintbrush to black. And this is really easy because you can go right over the edges here. And I'll show you if we go back into our image. We're not painting back in the transparency. We're just removing spill correction. So you can just easily brush in where you want to remove that spill correction. Oops, excuse me. You see what I did there? I actually painted in the spill correction map. So I removed the color that it's using to correct, but there still is some spill correction being applied. It's applying a neutral blend. Anyways, I'm going to undo that here. Be careful that when you're trying to paint in this mask, you're not on the main layer because you'll um, be painting in the wrong layer. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the mask. Then I'm going to um, paint off the spill correction. Again, I like to use my brush hardness at 100% because you want to be careful that you're not painting off spill correction on the skin areas or in the hair or anywhere else. But for this, it's pretty simple on this image. So we'll just make quick work of this. So there you see you've got the original jersey color back. The last thing I like to do, well, the last thing on this image anyway, is we got to remove that area where the foreground recovery bought, brought back that dark shadowed area, area of the screen. So to do this, I'm going to view the original image. And I do that by disabling the layer mask and then unchecking these. This is the way I find it's easiest to do it. And then I will come into my magic wand tool. And I'm going to click on, I guess if you're on the layer, it doesn't matter. But if you want another layer, you'd want to make sure that this sample all layers is selected. That way your sampling as a what you see is what you get for the magic wand. In any case, one click, and I got my tolerance at 50, you might need to adjust that as well, but one click, it selected all that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand that selection, usually one or two pixels. Um, in this case, I think we'll use two. That's expanding this selection two pixels in, and that's just making sure we get all the fringe removed. And then I'm going to just re-enable the mask here. 
I'm going to click on the mask. So we're now targeting the mask. And I'm going to fill the mask with black. And now you can see that when we did that, that area is now completely transparent and we've fixed that issue that we had from the foreground recovery slider bringing that shadow back. I'll deselect that. Now I know this seems like a lot of work, but it's actually only a minute or two tops once you get used to this, and especially in the method I'm going to, going to show in the next video. So make sure you watch the next video that discusses using actions to really speed up your workflow, and that's going to save you a bunch of time if you're extracting a large quantity of images.